Welcome back to Instagram vs Reality, back by popular demand, the segment on the channel where we call out bad Photoshop morphs and show you why everything you see on Instagram is pretty much fugazi. While we explore the world of poorly done photoshops, just remember to keep your hands inside the vehicles at all times and that these videos are intended to be informative and are not aimed to target or slander anyone's brand. This week's submissions are from r slash Instagram reality. Let's start this episode with the person who can probably just buy Adobe itself, no, like literally the company. This picture is from the Blue Origins rocket launch and we could probably only track this image back to a Daily Mail post, so this one is probably not edited by <laughs> the man himself, Jeff Bezos, or the Blue Origin social media handler, rather probably by somebody who works at the Daily Mail. This is an impressive edit because there are no apparent signs that point to the fact that this image was edited, but as you look closely at this picture of, of William Shatner, you can see that this is exactly the same torso with William Shatner's head pasted on top of it. We can confirm this by looking at the creases and the folds of the uniform. There are, well, they are exactly the same and line up quite perfectly. In this picture, we can give him the benefit of the doubt, but the next picture that was posted on Jeff Bezos' own account you, you can't really say much else. As you can figure out by taking a look on that hand that somewhere along the way, this picture has been tampered with. I have no clue about how you can mess up a whole hand and then miss it altogether. I have only ever seen this type of defamation or disappearance of the hands or the fingers in some of the Kardashian edits, so I guess they share the same photo editor and not Curve Studio. Now, come to think of it, Jeff Bezos shouldn't be anywhere near this type of content where we talk about how he badly photoshopped himself or someone he was with, but alas, here we are. The world's richest man also makes Photoshop mistakes. Now, although maybe we shouldn't expect too much from someone who built a rocket for millions of dollars that looks like this. So this goes to show that everything that you see on social media is questionable, even by somebody you really wouldn't expect at all. Moving right along, ladies and gentlemen, this is the poster for How I Met Your Father, and yes, I said father, not mother. Obviously there weren't any high hopes for this series, I didn't even know this was a thing, but they could have at least done a bit better with the poster. As you can see the lighting for every single person in this poster, it's very different. For the guy on the left, it's a front light. For the girl to his right, it's a lighting that's coming from her right side. For the girl in the middle, the light is again somehow going back to the front. For the guy on the right, the light is on the left hand side and the same is the case with the girl on the extreme right. Are you keeping up? So. All of these people were what's known as composited in, meaning that they came from another photo and somehow combined together like a poorly done Christmas photo. The most apparent error is the missing shadow under the guy's hand, and that's a pretty big giveaway. We've covered this type of shadow error with Ariana Grande's pictures, where everything was okay except for the shadow under her fingers. Bad luck, Ari. Now, for the fix, we won't be fixing the lighting on each and every one of them because it's not as noticeable as this missing shadow altogether. So we're going to add the shadow by creating a curves adjustment layer and adding a little bit of color so that it matches the shadows on the object itself. The next example, we have another one of those low textureless edits where the retoucher doesn't understand that a huge amount of makeup doesn't hide or get rid of the skin texture altogether. Makeup is not Photoshop, please don't confuse the two. As you can see from this example image, the subject has a decent amount of makeup on, but you can still see the texture the creases in the skin, the pores and the small blemishes, which is the absolute extent of what you can fix in Photoshop, nothing more. You don't and you shouldn't get rid of the whole skin texture regardless of the fact of how much makeup the model has applied. Pro tip for the girlies out there, if you're looking at photos of makeup advertising, pay very close attention to the skin texture. To show you what this face should have looked like, we'll use the texture from the example image and adjust the levels and drop the opacity a little to match the lighter skin tone. You can see that this image does look a lot better than the original now. The next image is of an Olympic athlete, I felt like it was apt because we're in Olympic season, who is apparently a huge follower of she who shall not be named. Clearly this isn't exactly a traditionally retouched picture, but one with an extreme filter on with the settings being dialed up to 11. In simple words, these filters are trained to look for patterns like a set of eyes, a nose, a mouth. A good example of this is the Viola Jones algorithm, if you're interested Google that. But if you want to keep moving around too much, it fails to recognize these landmarks on the face and your whole face starts to look like a Van Gogh painting. That's pretty much what's happened here. 
Her chin blends into the, her neck and well, her nose is very much non-existent. The next one is a similar example with just a hint of a nose. Often there's no way to fix an image like this that's too far gone after it's been published, usually as a JPEG, but here we're going to use a skin texture trick where we fill a layer with 50% grey, add some noise to it and then apply an embossing layer to give it more depth and then mask out the unnecessary parts. For the nose, we can add a faint shadow using a curves adjustment layer to suggest that there was once a nose there. The fascinating and inexplicable thing is that even after such huge errors, errors that can be pointed out by even a person who has no knowledge of how editing works, people still go ahead and post these pictures and I guess they think we won't notice? For this next picture, we have yet another liquify wonder where he has used the bloat tool in the liquify filter to gain some curvature in his hips and biceps. Here, what he's done to his biceps can be forgiven because it pales in comparison to what he's done with his hips. Why? To fix this, we're going to apply the liquified filter but a reverse of the bloat tool called the pucker tool to bring the region back in and does exactly as the name suggests and return it to its original form. Every time I see these pictures, I wonder why, but that's a question that I've stopped asking myself for some time now ever since I saw the Kardashians photoshop Courtney into their holiday photo. For the next liquify masterpiece we're going to be talking about, we can't do much because there's just too much information lost and at this point it's an artwork. But the excessive use of the liquify tool is a characteristic feature of the tool which results in blurring and distortion much like this, what we call image artifacts. This is why you are supposed to work in lots of different layers so that you can work non-destructively. It's a very key feature of the Photoshop toolset. But this picture was edited on a phone, which is the case for a lot of these pictures. So it was either not an option or the editor was too lazy to do that work properly. This is the difference between a quality and a, well, amateur edit that ends up looking like this. The worst part is that the picture isn't really all of it. There are a lot more pictures that are actually much worse than this and people applaud it and believe these proportions to be realistic, which is exactly why we exist. Talking about proportions, let's move on to this image here, which is a bad edit all in all, let's be honest. The chair behind her is curved, the drawers don't follow any sense of perspective or the laws of physics, they're either going too high or too low and this image overall is a complete optical illusion. Now, mind you, this picture could easily be one of those where it looks like there's something off, like it did in one of our previous videos, but here there's just too much evidence to prove otherwise. At first, I was quite skeptical about this, but then I saw this next picture where she has done the same thing again, and that was very much enough proof for me. To fix this, we're going to use, again, our trusty liquify tool in the Photoshop gallery to bring her thighs back in to remove that bump, bring her hips back, get her back to the point where she can breathe properly and look like a normal human. Don't believe everything you see on Instagram, learn how to tell what's real and what's not. For our next picture, it's not so much as about the proportions as it is about the composite. Now compositing, if you're still not familiar, is the process of getting subjects or elements from one image and basically interjecting them into another or superimposing them and trying to make it look believable. Although I wouldn't be surprised to know that she has altered her proportions as well in this photo. In edits like this, I, people usually don't put much effort in taking care of three major things for creating a believable composite. One is lighting, two is colours and three is perspective. The colours are a little bit too off here but they're not as noticeable as the lighting. To analyse if the lighting in your composite is working out or not, you need to use a black and white check layer as shown in our previous videos and she is way brighter than she is supposed to be so it just doesn't match the lighting and we're going to bring the brightness down by using a curves adjustment layer. Also we will be adding some contact shadows called ambient occlusion and the actual shadow casted by her on the ground causing the final result to look a lot more cohesive. Our uh, lucky last example is of the person that I really didn't expect to be seen here. She was Miss World in 1994, back when social media wasn't a thing, and cosmetic surgeries weren't all the rage. People still had procedures done back then, but that mostly included rhinoplasties, aka nose jobs, and they weren't as prevalent nor routine as some of the procedures we see today. So basically she won the title without cheat codes, and it's a safe bet that if you're crowned Miss World, then you really don't need to perfect your looks any further because as you can see this is another one of those textureless face edits where the person ends up looking like a Madame Tussauds wax model 
because every single detail on her face is blurred, which rids the picture of any definition, depth, and honestly, those sculptures look way better than this. In contrast to this, if you look at these pictures of hers, you can clearly see the texture and the definition of her face, and it looks just so much better, not in spite of it, but because of the textures. In conclusion, if the Miss World herself feels like she has to get rid of any and all human characteristics to appear beautiful, then I guess there's really no hope for any of us and the overuse of extreme blurring of the skin, the abhorrent stretching and pulling of body proportions may just be justified at this point. Alright, so that brings another episode to a close. Hopefully you've learned something about Photoshop and some of the techniques we use in retouching images or trying to make faces look better, worse, trying to explain difficult facial aesthetics concepts. These are kind of the skills you pick up along the way. We've covered everything that we've touched on here in a previous video somewhere along in the series. As always, if you're enjoying the content, then you can really support the channel by subscribing and click the notification bell to catch future episodes. You can also catch us on Instagram and TikTok where we have new content creators making platform-specific content, and the Coos website has a lot of content on facial aesthetics.